Hey everybody, this is Franco and I have an update on the PM728VT CNC spindle control project. So as you recall, in my previous videos I was explaining how thanks to a very foolish mistake that I made, I actually blew up the motor control board and, and the motor in my brand new milling machine. So that was, uh, that was a real, uh, not a good day for me. But fortunately, the people at Precision Matthews, they, uh, they have all these parts in stock. So they support these machines really well. So they sent me all kinds of stuff to get me back up and running. And thankfully now my milling machine works again. So let me give you some information. Let me tell you how to avoid making the mistake that I made, as well as getting, getting your machine wired up to uh, have full CNC control. So let me just give you the quick demo. So right now, the potentiometer and the direction switches, they do nothing. Power switch still works, and the tachometer still works. The emergency stop is still doing what the emergency stop will do, but the potentiometer and the forward reverse switch are now obsolete. They don't do anything there. If I come over here to the CNC, Centroid Acorn, or, uh, well, their software is called CNC12. If I jump into an MDI, I can give you a command. Let's just do an M, I like caps lock, M3, we'll do S of, I don't know, 500. And when I give it a cycle start, which I will do right now, here's what happens. So there we go. We have commanded a spindle. It turned on. It's going about 500 RPM. We'll talk about that in a minute. But there we go. Spindle is turning. If I, you know, it's on an M3 right now. If I give it an M4, which I wouldn't recommend doing this at, at terribly high RPMs, but reverse the spindle. So we have full CNC control over the spindle now, which is exactly what I want it to do. I'm going to stop the spindle. So let me tell you how I got there, and then I'll give you a little demo. The, as I mentioned in a previous video, there's a gentleman who sent me this wiring diagram a long time ago, and this was really helpful and I think lots of people have used this and probably appreciate it very much. I was kind of inspired by him to make up a wiring diagram of my own and I will put a link to this in the description of this video if you would like to check this out. So uh, here's the disclaimer. I'm not an expert on anything and um, this is just what I did. I don't, uh, you know, I'm not going to promise this is 100% safe or any of that stuff you are responsible for your own safety. So if you use this diagram, do whatever you need to do to ensure your own safety. But this is uh, what I hope is a pretty clear depiction of how I wired this thing up. So first of all, the, re the reason why I got in trouble and blew up my motor was because when I was experimenting, I was just grabbing a hold of these terminals here with alligator clips and uh, shorted out on the machine and blew stuff up, right? So nobody wants you to do that. The, the folks at Precision Matthews definitely don't want you to do that. Uh, I don't want you to do that. So the easy way to do this is instead of trying to clip on to these wires, what you want to do is plug directly into this board, into this little connector. So how do you do that? Well, you could, you could come over here and you could snip this, all your connections on your you know your control panel you could just cut them and then use this this connector you could do that but what I found was these uh, connectors are standard for uh, lithium polymer battery charging for RC racing and uh, I put on the, the little diagram here I put a place where you can buy something you can uh, buy a part and uh, cut one end off of it and what you'll have is you will have a connector with some leads 
So that is the safe way to do it. That's what I would recommend is getting yourself one of these and wiring it up properly and then you know this just plugs right into the board. If I can do it with my left hand uh, they just plug in and then you're you're good to go. You've got a very nice professional looking installation. It's safe and you will hopefully not do what I did and blow things up. This is the end you'll cut off. So there's the first tip and I can't pull that out with one hand so I'm just going to let me pause the video for a second. Hang on. Okay, we're back. So what you're going to do is here's the connections. You can see what it is and I try to color code these to match the the stock wires that you'll see in the Precision Matthews. So you want to uh, jumper the normally closed side of output relay number one over to the common of output number two and then you want to hook up to that uh, connection as shown. And just as a point of reference let me just carefully pop that in there you can see the colors of the wires. So that's on the diagram. This is going to these, the brown wire, the yellow wire, and the blue wire, they take the place of your forward and reverse switch. Then you have the black wire, which is ground, and the white wire, which I think is called, I think it's called AL. I'm not sure. What they do is they come on over to the uh, KBSI 240D and what they're going to do is they're going to replace the potentiometer. That's what replaces the functionality of that. So now you can give yourself different spindle speeds. You're not going to use that 5 volt connection. So that that 5 volt pin you're not going to hook anything up to that. So when you're done there should only be 5 connections on CON1. Then of course you have the wiring of the KBSI 240D. You can see 9 and 10 they go up to the the connector here that we just talked about. Uh, 5 and 6 they connect to the analog output on the ACORN and then you have to give this thing 110 volt power so pins 1 and 2 or terminals 1 and 2 they get jumpered together, that goes to neutral. Terminals 3 and 4 get jumpered together and they go to line. You'll notice there's no ground, no ground connection on that signal isolation board. Other things that are important, this little jumper here, you want that set to voltage. It, it may be a switch. On my board it's a switch. You can see uh, my switch is a little different. So, But the, the important thing is you want uh, you want the setting that reflects voltage, not current. The, and maybe I'll update this. I may put a little note on here just to, to specify that. Then the other two things that you want to look for, there's two little uh, adjustable trim pots on here. There's one labeled min and one labeled max. You want to adjust the min until the voltage coming across 9 and 10 is zero when you're programming a zero RPM on the centroid control and then you want the voltage at your max RPM to be approximately 5 volts. So when you configure the wizard in the centroid acorn software you're going to give it a max spindle RPM which in my case is 4300 RPM. Uh, my minimum RPM I put in is 100. But when you fire off your commands for, you know, uh, spindle stop or zero RPM, you, you want to see like zero vo volts coming across 9 and 10. When you fire off the max RPM, 4300, you want to see about 5 volts coming across 9 and 10. And then what you're going to do is you're going to kind of just play with those two tri uh, pots as you're running through RPMs on your machine. Other things, this little chart right over here, this shows you how to wire up your encoder. So 
I don't have the encoder mounted to the machine, I just have it sitting on the bench. And you can see that it's working. When I spin it slowly, you can see it's, it's providing feedback. And that just plugs into the Acorn with one of those DB9 adapter boards. And other than that, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. I think that's it. So really, this is a simple process. This is way, way easier than I made it out to be when I got started with this. But um, hopefully that you'll, <laughs> you'll benefit from my mistakes. And if you follow this, it should be pretty simple to hook this up. You should not have to worry about frying anything. Of course, you know, you got to be careful. So let's do a little demo here. I have a program loaded that will run through some RPMs. So let's just fire that off, hopefully. So there we go. We're just going to step through some different RPM ranges. And I don't know how easily you can see the tack on the display. But what you'll notice is it, it should be like nice even numbers, like 500, 600, 700. You know, that is supposed to be 800. And what you're going to find, although I thought the relationship was linear, perfectly linear, it's not. So the, uh, the output coming out of the acorn is perfectly linear. But the way that the DC motor controller here uh, works is not linear. So you'll notice, so right now, that's 1600. It's firing off, you know. So the, the RPMs are not perfectly matched to what my CNC thinks it's outputting. Now there's, there might be some tricky ways to get around that, but that's where, you know, we're pretty close, close enough for me. So if that's 2300 RPM, 2400 RPM is what it's commanded, 25. I try to adjust it so like in that mid range, like 2000 to 3000 range, it would be fairly close. And I may play with it some more, but, but this is close enough. There's 3,000, so 3,000 is right on the money. should be 43 then it shuts off so yeah it's it's not a perfectly linear relationship between the voltages that the acorn wants to output and the voltages that this motor controller processes the acorn is set up it wants to work with things like vfds if this was a vfd drive uh, it would be very accurate it, uh, the relate the relationship would be very linear these dc motor control boards I've not seen one that's perfectly linear yet. I would have been really happy. I thought this might be a perfectly linear relationship, but it's not. It doesn't surprise me. The other DC motor controllers are not linear either. So it really doesn't matter. It's close. And I'll tell you, when you're doing things where feed is feed and speed is super critical, like let's say you're tapping, doing things like that, the encoder is providing the feedback to the CNC. So even though the RPMs are not exactly what you command it, uh, the encoder is going to be giving the CNC the exact RPM, the exact position of the spindle. So that's what allows you to do rigid tapping. Um, because, you know, while you're, go while you're running the tap through the cut, it's just the, uh, the, the friction and the resistance is actually going to affect the RPMs of the spindle. So you're never going to have perfectly commanded RPM anyway. So this, the CNC needs this encoder to uh, give you the proper position of the spindle. So anyway, the encoder is very important, and that's how you do rigid tapping. It's, it's nice to have an exact RPM, but it's not actually 100% necessary. Uh, so I'm probably good just where I am. Maybe I'll play with these little pots a little bit 
just to get it maybe a little closer. I don't know. We'll see. But, but this is 100% functional just the way that it is, and I can move on. Uh, let's see. Other things. I am going to continue to power the spindle off and on manually, and I'll tell you why. I want to know when I press that power button that this thing is not going to turn on no matter what. Uh, so for me, that's kind of a safety thing. I'm going to manually control the off and on button. I'm not going to let the CNC do that. Other things that are a consideration, and uh, I haven't talked about this yet, but this e-stop button, this e-stop is the e-stop e -stop for the spindle. So if I, if I press that, it shuts the spindle off. That e-stop is not it's not tied in with the CNC. So that's something I have to figure out. I'd like it, I'd like to have an e-stop up here on the, the spindle head that when I, I smack that, it stops everything. So I have to think about how I want to wire that up. Other things that would be a consideration, normally uh, a VFD drive has a, like, a drive fault output. So normally a VFD would have this output that you wire into the acorn where if the, for some reason the spindle stops turning or alarms out, it will trip uh, an alarm on the CNC control and the CNC will stop moving. Right now, I haven't really figured out how to do that easily yet. There's no output on these DC motor controls that generates a fault. Uh, so right now, if for some reason this spindle would stop turning, uh, I think the axis motors, you know, the CNC would still try to keep cutting, right? It, there's no feedback here yet between the spindle and the CNC in terms of a fault. So that's something else I have to play with. So safety, right? Got to think safety. This wiring diagram doesn't cover any of the e-stop stuff or alarms or anything like that. This is just basic connections and on how to get the uh, CNC to control the spindle. So that'll be the subject of more videos, I'm sure. Okay, well, I think we covered that nicely. Hopefully that will help you guys. If you're looking to do a CNC conversion on a PM728VT, check out the wiring diagram. Um, and, you know, of course you're dealing with electricity, so be extremely careful and try not to hurt yourself or blow anything up. And also, you know, please look at the, the other links in the description of this video. Um, you know, there's some folks in there that help support my channel, so, you know, please check out their websites and uh, see what they have to offer. All right, thanks for watching. Be safe and have a great day.